Yo, what is up, people of the internet? Welcome back to another episode of the Waveform Podcast. We're your hosts. I'm Marquez. And I'm Andrew. And David is out this week, but don't worry. We're going to fill him in and ask him the trivia questions when he gets back in. So he will mm-hmm. have every opportunity to get those points. In the meantime, today's episode, we've got some EV vaporware that I'd like to rant about. We also have kind of some, I just want to talk about ChatGPT and Bing and it going <laughs> off the rails and just like this this video that we're for sure going to work on and make a thing. Um, but to start off, we have some OnePlus stuff. Obviously, we had the OnePlus 11 mm-hmm. uh, a little while ago. There was some other stuff shown at the event, the Buds, and a tablet that's going to come out at some point this year, but also a keyboard. Yes. And you want to talk about the keyboard. I do want to talk about the keyboard. Have you seen it yet? I've seen, yeah. Oh, the renders, to me, look like, and other people have said this, like a like a Keychron. Like, I have a Keychron keyboard yeah, yeah, yeah. already, and it looks just like it. Makes sense. They partnered with Keychron. I, um, okay. I'm going to start with what I do like about it, and that is how it looks. I think it it is really... It looks like a Keychron, but it's also unique at the same time. I do think they did some nice edge work around it, and they make... Rather than feet that flip up on the bottom, they have this really cool metal bar that kind of yeah. folds down with, like, little rubber feet to make sure it doesn't slide. Um The color scheme is really cool, silver base, and then they have these kind of like offset light gray and dark gray keycaps with a couple of hints of red here and there on like the escape button and the enter key. Mm -hmm. The the knob on the top that's clear is a little weird to me. I think if that was like anodized red to match with the other red keycaps, I think that would have been really cool. Um, But that's kind of where everything I love about it stops and everything that I think is really strange about it starts coming in. You know, like the OnePlus featuring badge on the corner? Well, because that's the name of it, which is what I'll start off with by weird. The One f- OnePlus featuring Keyboard 81, I believe is the name of this. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's called, so the company name is OnePlus. Yes. And then the keyboard name is what? It just on the page says OnePlus featuring Keyboard 81. So, so where featuring. that starts and stops, I don't... So it's the OnePlus featuring keyboard. I think so. 81 or 181 or something. That's 81. I, all right. Yeah, I'm not totally sure there. <laughs> it's a weird so name. Weird name. Um, but then, so this is kind of where the weirdest part happens. And this was shown to me by uh, someone on Twitter named Shimon, I believe his name is. Um, I know he listens to the Waveform podcast. But so thank you for sending this to me. Well, how much do you know about like keyboard switches and... Uh, the type. Well, basically that the cherry switches are kind of the de the facto mm-hmm. and then everyone else can like, there's other switches out there, but they're kind of all based on the cherry switches. Do you know like a couple of the colors and like how they're represented Brown, in, in like the cherry and everything? red, blue. I forget which one is clicky, which one isn't, okay, but okay. yeah, there's a couple colors. So in general, like cherry is kind of the mainstay, but there's a bunch of other like Gateron, um and they kind of keep a similar color scheme in a lot of senses, especially when it comes to like the main ones, like you said, blue and red. So uh, blue is always clicky. We have a couple blue ones. They are like the loudest, like tactile, super, super clicky. And red is usually linear, like really soft, easy actuation, no okay. bump, pretty quiet. For whatever reason, OnePlus decided to make their red switches tactile and their blue switches linear. So the exact opposite of everything that everybody is used so to. So different. So quirky. <laughs> Good job. Uh, what, that almost feels like that was probably the pitch there. Like, hey, this makes no sense. Yeah, but it's quirky. So they're making their own switches. And I, they have. I guess. Interesting. Uh, they're called. Wi- the reds are called Winter Bonfire, and those are tactile. And the blues are called Summer Breeze, and those are linear. What? The red is. Sorry, the red is winter, and the blue is summer? <laughs> I didn't. What? I'm so mad at the other things. That hasn't crossed my mind about how that also makes no sense. Okay. So they've named, they have their own switches, they've named them the opposite thing, and then they've also made their feel. It's like how um, when you go to a sushi restaurant, they, they kind of all have the same, like, you, all, you know what you're going to get if you get a California roll or a dragon roll or whatever. It's the same thing everywhere mm-hmm. for certain numbers. And they just went backwards on that, too. They just <laughs> yeah. said, all right, red is not what red is everywhere else, but it's going to be named Winter Bonfire. <laughs> all right. So, yeah, there's that's, a lot of weird stuff here. That's weird. So then... On top of that, I, I posted some pictures in here and we can put them on screen, but I'll also explain them. There's there's two kind of color schemes. There's They're all based on gray, which I said I really liked. And I do think these both look great, but one of them is kind of all the numbers and letters are dark gray and then all the outside keys are light gray. So you kind of have like a mainly dark gray, yeah. light gray contrast. I like, I like that. This one is actually the one I like better, which is light gray all on the inside with the numbers and letters and then dark gray on the outside. Mm-hmm. Now, 
According to the website, and maybe this will change because it seems like a pretty easy change, you can only get the dark gray with the red tactiles, and you can only get the light gray with the blue linear switches. So if you're like me and like tactile switches, but the light gray color scheme, it seems like I'm shit out of luck or I have to buy both of them and switch the keycaps. You can't buy individual keys separately from the keycaps. You have to buy the whole package. It seems like they're being sold as packages right now. Uh, this is not... I, this doesn't strike me as something the keyboard community would love. That's that's kind of what I'm getting at. And okay. this could change because this isn't for sale yet, right? They just did Kickstarter backing. Uh. So maybe they'll change this. Um, the reason it might not be able to get changed, and I don't know if this is probably not true, but they do have two different types of materials for the keycaps. So PBT is like the super standard. All uh. key, a lot of keycaps are made out of that. And then they also have a new material called Marble Mallow, which they're saying is a i need to make sure i get this it is durable but bouncy and so again those are the only considered the pbt are the dark gray with the red tactile switches and the marble mallow are the light gray with the blue linear switch seems like something apple would do you know like you can only get this switch with this type of key because that's the way it should be and if you're going to do any modifications, your keyboard will just explode and it's, it won't work. It seems really dumb. Just like all they need to do is sell the base with the set of switches and then you pick the color on top. Like that would make this be too easy. infinitely better. Too easy. How much is this going to cost? I don't think there's a price out okay. yet. So they did the thing with the tablet where they revealed it and they were like coming soon. And they're sort of like measuring the reaction and deciding I, later. I'm going to later. be totally honest here. I looked at this and then immediately got angry about all the stuff I just ranted about and did not look much further on that. So, but I I think because they're doing, do you remember when we covered this before, they were doing kind of like a, a backing round where then they were going to announce it, but I still don't think this is coming out till May. Okay. So I don't know. Let's yeah, they do this weird thing where they pretend they're a tiny company that needs Kickstarter money, where they're really just measuring <laughs> interest and inventorying as they go, but they're, yeah, they need the Kickstarter. So sure. I, I'm going to go, when I... Google OnePlus keyboard price, the top ones on the Google search shows it the OnePlus and the price tag in the Google search says $99,999. It sure does. Okay. So, so yeah. Either very expensive <laughs> or um, I would or, like some customization at a $100,000 price tag. But, yeah. So yeah. yeah, I don't think it's released yet on the actual price. It's got it. I think a lot of people rumored and if you just think of key con prices like 100, 120, around there probably a little more expensive than keychron yeah i think mine was like 85 something like that i could see under 150 pretty pretty easily all right well we'll see one plus you know they're at least it's, it's like a different thing that they're doing like they've made so many phones and tablets or phones and earbuds at this point having a couple different things yeah. to add to the one plus brand is neat and maybe they can loop people in who are interested in one plus but yeah we'll see how that goes I, ultimately i like it if it was just the Switch thing, I would be fine. So I'm hoping they can change the, like, picking your keycaps with your Switch. Uh -huh. And then I actually think it'll it'll probably be pretty solid. The name is going to suck, though. No like, yeah, that's going to be terrible. It, the fact that it's plastered right on the front of it also yeah. is... Like a watermark. Woof, yeah. Okay, well, at least that's going to exist at some point. <laughs> um, because our next items unsure if slash when they will exist. Maybe we can start with the Rivian because that will probably eventually exist. Yeah. Um, as we know, Rivian makes vehicles right now called the R1T and the R1S. Wait, speaking of, yeah. an R1S drove by the other day. Here? Yeah. Yeah, they're they're starting to show up. It was actually. really, I was literally staring at the guy and he just like looked at me and waved like really yeah. unnervingly. And I was like, oh man, I'm staring way too much at this. <laughs> I've seen one in the wild so far, actually. Wow, which okay. Is interesting. It was blue. Still got paper plates and everything. But so R1T stands for R1 platform and truck, and R1S stands for R1 platform SUV. Uh, eventually, they're going to make an R2 platform. Maybe there's also a truck and an SUV on that platform. Mm -hmm. But I think everyone's like trying to explore like what that would probably be. I think we assume something lower in price because Rivians are pretty premium in price right now. That's an alliteration as an accident. But <laughs> 70, 80, 90, 100 thousand dollars for a truck and an SUV is pretty premium. So R2, people like to think, oh, maybe they're gonna make like a a cheaper version of an EV on this on this like high tech platform. Rivian's got the money to develop it. What would that look like? And uh, we do have some some renders. Actually, they're basically 
uh, AI generated renders. Oh, are as they far really? as I can tell. Yeah, you know how I can tell Dude. because none of the text You're says right. anything. That I did not put that together. <laughs> so uh, John Rettinger has posted uh, some AI generated renders of of other similar looking Rivians. Um, I basically think you have to make you. You know how we keep seeing the Ford Bronco or whatever it is out yes, here. Yes, that's. I think it it should be that right a smaller like mm-hmm. the 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 R1T is already a small pickup truck. You don't yeah. really get to make much smaller of a pickup truck. But the Bronco or something like the the Jeep Rubicon, I think it's called. I keep seeing these like that sort of size thing where it's like a utility small crossover thing. I think that would be sick as an electric version. I that's like part of the reason I put this in here because we've talked about this before. But if I imagine a smaller a smaller R1S, I would be all over if the price is right. Yeah. A smaller R1T, I think I like the R1T size. A smaller one would probably be closer to like a Maverick. So it would be a really small pickup truck. But the if we're comparing these, like imagine Rivian's making the Bronco equivalent or the Maverick equivalent as an EV. The Bronco and the Maverick are like almost impossible to get right now. They're just yeah. flying off the shelves. So EV versions of those would be crazy popular. Obviously that size is popular. This this R1S or R2S, man, I would kill for that. I'm imagining it about the size of the Bronco or, or not too far off from my Forester probably. Yeah. Yeah, the Maverick you mentioned, I was just looking it up, is slightly smaller than the Rivian. Just slightly. Yeah. Just a little bit. Also, there's one called the Santa Cruz. Yeah, the the Hyundai pickup. Santa Cruz. Santa Cruz, yeah, not yeah, the Santa dimensions. Pickup. That's four inches shorter than the Maverick. So, yeah, they're, they're, you could get a little shorter, but it's like... Yeah, the Rivian's like a small pickup truck. That's the thing is the Rivian already is a tad smaller. So I think the I think I might be wrong. I think the Rivian's about the size of a Tacoma, which I think it's is a really good equal. size. Yeah, so smaller than that, you're getting into Santa Cruz Maverick, which is like, yeah, I but think a lot it, of truck people wouldn't love it. But the Maverick's selling like crazy. So this is true. I wonder if they would also ever consider a full size, which would probably be further down the line and even more expensive. But the the F one fifty is much larger than the Rivian. Yeah. But you get to fit a much larger battery pack and a much larger front trunk and a much larger bed and just all the benefits that come with being larger. And that is a crowd, but it's also like they look to pay F-150 prices, not that. I I think that crowd is also the like the truck truck people crowd where Rivian's clearly doing this more like adventure crowd that likes the the benefits of a pickup truck. So exactly. Yeah. I like this Rivian speaks to what I like, like Trucks are cool, but an F-150 is giant, and yeah. I don't feel like a truck person where this is a pickup truck that meets the, like, adventure need. Yeah. So, I mean, we're, we'll keep an eye on Rivian because we do expect that to eventually happen. They're just starting, as we mentioned, to have R1Ss on the road, so that's cool. Uh, but I also conveniently left this in because it's a segue to something that will, I don't think, ever even come close to coming out. But it is a fun article anyway, because you know how you go to CES and you see all these like concept vehicles that range from like a current vehicle with a modified interior yeah. to like, you know, a Volkswagen bus with like no steering wheel and all the seats face the face middle the inside, and you're like, yeah. what is happening here? Like things that will probably not happen in our lifetime. Uh, this Audi crossover, which looks sick. Okay. Can I is can I interrupt happen. really quick? Yeah, I, I just want to explain like why I put this in here and how, and I think you have a similar idea or story of this. Is like you see this and the exterior of it looks at first in pictures totally reasonable. It's like a higher off crossover that's supposed to be a little bit, I guess, more clearance for adventure styles again. Sure, but it totally looks real. And then the more you scroll into it, or heaven forbid, watch the video they posted, yeah. you just so quickly realize this thing is never going to exist and is yeah. totally wild. It's one of those things where, yeah, you you look at the outside, that looks dope. And then the more you look into it, the more it falls apart exactly. as like a reasonable thing. Exactly. Um, it, look, I, I like Audi's designs and like this as an EV, and I like that they're at least dreaming a little bit, which is cool. I like, you know, concepty type things, even though it, we're not going to make any like, you know, we're not even going to pretend this is going to come out anytime soon. Mm-hmm. But this... Um, well, the video is one of the most... You know what the video is? The video is what happens when you have like a marketing department that has to make concepts and they get a budget every year. And if they don't spend it, they don't get the money again. <laughs> so they have to spend it. And so they just did all of the craziest like 
weirdest things they possibly can with like CG and automated cars and like it's a five minute video of like a car following this couple around the forest as they go skiing and golfing and, and golfing and yeah. biking S such adventure the the fun part is like the back of it sort of pops up and you're like what do you mean you can't fit a bike in there but it, then you can roll the bike in and it sticks out the back like a kind of kind of a pickup truck yeah it's it's pretty much I think the glass actually rolls forward on yeah. the top of it so then you don't have the the headroom limitation and then yeah the gate in the back folds down and has these little divots that like a yeah. bike wheel can fit in i which, think that's cool which is super cool but only for bikes yeah because you can't fit anything else in the trunk other than bikes if it slopes uh, that much I, I guess yeah i don't know i mean it, it does kind of eliminate the headroom that's one of the things where it's like m maybe we could see that in a future car Maybe. It's see, it's like that will automatically add twenty thousand dollars to the yeah, price. Yeah, as tag. a feature, maybe. Yeah. The other crazy thing is it's just a transparent front, <laughs> which <laughs> is cool looking until you rear end someone and the entire front of your car shatters. Uh, so yeah, it's 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 tough. It's, it's tough. All, like I mean, and if you haven't seen this at all, the reason it's so obviously not going to happen is when it goes to the interior shots. There's no steering wheel. There's no dashboard, and there's like this holographic mountainscape that like you're controlling with your fingers in the air yeah yeah there's there's these ar glasses as well <laughs> i don't know if you caught that in the video yeah. where you put the glasses on and it just shows you information about the truck next to the truck and then <laughs> this whole car seems like it came from like a deleted scene in avatar 2 no do you know <laughs> it yeah. it feels like uh if James Bond was trying to mm. create, like, if he was trying to use this new car in the EV scape of James Bond or something like that, it like it can go off road and yeah. your skis can like the this picture of it with the skis on it looks like it should be in a James Bond like snow scene. Like he gets ejector seated out of it with the <laughs> it does skis. Look like a movie. It looks yeah. like a futuristic movie yeah. car. I would love to see something on the road that looks like this on the outside. Yeah, but I think we'll, we you very quickly realize why it's not happening. Exactly. As soon as you, like look into it, which is a shame because the exterior looks. It looks so cool. So cool. It yeah. looks so cool. Well, Audi, I hope you make some other good stuff instead of just tempting us with these insane renders. Um, we do have a, a trivia as mm -hmm. well, but we'll take a quick break after trivia. And I do. I want to talk about like Bing, ChatGPT, Google, this insane landscape of AI, and probably the video where I'm going to end up making yeah. about it. But first, let's take some trivia questions. All right, trivia and quick reminder, uh, answers at the end. So if you're listening and you're waiting for the trivia answers, they will be at the end. Yep. All right, first question. The first cherry keyboard was introduced in 1973. The keyboard had cherry... <laughs> Don't add Marquez is either. already angry. No that keyboard had cherry switches in it, which, fun fact, the patent for it was also approved in 1973. So the question, when was the cherry MX switch invented? No. Oh. Hmm. I don't know either. Don't no, worry. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was Cherry MX right from the beginning. So did I. And then I started Googling oh, it. And I was yeah. like, oh, learn something. I want, I want to ask Bing. <laughs> well, you want to guarantee you get it wrong? Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> it's going to talk about like a actual cherry. Yeah, probably. <laughs> All right. We'll think about it and we'll be right back. Support for today's episode comes from Shopify. Selling things can be complicated, even if it's just a t-shirt. And I say that from personal experience with our Waveform merch. Marquez, if you could make like, just imagine the wildest Waveform merch or like item that we could ever make, what would it be? Oh man, wildest Waveform merch? Probably like a, like a Mr. Potato Head type thing where you like pull the string and it like says quotes from the podcast. It says, what is up people of the internet? Yeah, it yeah. says that, it says like, 15% of my dial is chilly. Like, <laughs> okay. It says that when you pull a string. That sounds awesome, but yeah. also like wildly complicated. Oh, to for sure. Make. Yeah, luckily for us though, selling merch is very much a part-time gig. Uh, but if your whole job is to sell stuff, then you need a commerce platform that you trust. So Shopify is packed with industry-leading tools that give you the complete control over your business and your brand that you need without having to learn any new skills or design or code. It covers every sales channel from in-person POS system to an all-in-one e-commerce platform, and it lets you sell across social media marketplaces as well. If you get stuck, there's 24-7 help and an extensive business course library. So sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash waveform, all lowercase. So go to shopify.com slash waveform to take your business to the next level today. 
shopify.com slash waveform. All right, welcome back. We got to talk about, we got to talk more about Bing and ChatGPT and AI assistance. We did talk about it a bit last week. If you want to talk about more of our initial reactions, because we first had the event. Yeah. And then uh, a little bit of talking about when you use search and you get an assistant to help you instead of all of the links you usually have to browse through, how that affects the ecosystem of like publishers getting traffic versus like people just leaving search once they get the answer. We talked about that last week. Yes. This week, I want to talk about how insane it's getting. Yeah, yeah. If, if you if you were like, oh, that was too much last week, listen to this week. It's it's a funnier version of what we it's, talked about. It's amazing. We're okay. getting examples now, basically. Right. So I have access to it. There are a few people who are at the event who have access to it now. So p- people are actually going out and testing this now. And, you know, it's limited and eventually it'll ship. And I think uh, the people testing it are essentially beta testing for Microsoft, which yes. is it's fine. But I think this all... Uh, this all sort of sets in my my thesis for probably the video we're going to make about AI right now in 2023 today, which is we see like Microsoft make this huge move and like Google seems to be like like sheepishly following behind but not really making the big steps we assumed an AI first company yeah. would make. Bing has everything to gain and Google has everything to lose. That's how, that's how it's set up. That's, okay. that's how you explain everything that's happening which is okay if you're bing you can you can try stuff like this like you can try adding chat features to search they integrated it very quickly they're going to start to ship it in a month or two like they're going to have this massive disruption to the the way search works and to the way like people flow around the internet and some people are going to be really into that i did a poll on twitter and like 40 percent of people over half a million votes were like interested in switching from Google to Microsoft's hmm. new Bing experience. So yeah, if you're Bing, you're like, yeah, yeah, we'll try it. We'll do it. Anything. If you're Google, your entire business is built on basically Google search and advertising. Yeah. And so doing a dramatic move like this and shifting all of the economics and everything behind that is a is a risk to your whole business. So you can't move forward as aggressively and quickly with such dramatic things like this. And I think this is something a lot of people don't realize is how long Google's been working on stuff like this. I want to look back and find for the video the first time we saw Google show like Lambda on stage at Google I.O. I want to say it was like 2017. I thought it was last... Oh, the first time? Yeah, the first time they ever showed it. Remember when you could have a conversation with Pluto? Like Pluto, Pluto. yeah. Yeah. I don't think that was 2017. it was at least COVID time because was that not outside 2020 at least? It's always been outside, but I no, think no, they but showed it for a while. I think it was on that big screen where it was outside and we were wondering how there was no noise. Right. I want to say it was that. So that might not have been not, might not have been the first time they showed it, but that, that was, the, was the time they showed it like chatting with Pluto. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, and 2021. Yeah. Okay. So they did this whole, literally this whole AI demo on stage where they were like, ask Pluto a question, like, what's it like to be Pluto? And then Pluto goes, I am an icy body 200 million miles from the sun. And it like talks Same. about what it's like. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's kind of crazy that you could actually do this, but it never shipped. It was never public. It was never in chat GPT form. It was always just like a demo on stage and then back to Google in a private experiment. Yeah. You didn't really have the masses trying this stuff. So Google, yeah, they've been working on this, but if you're Google shipping something like this that not only disrupts the economics of it and like makes the entire way search works very different but also sometimes just gets things flatly wrong it, uh, is a reputational risk so bing everything to lose sorry bing Every- everything to gain okay google everything to lose that's like the the stasis that's how everything everything is built on top of that okay i see where you're at now with that so uh yeah, basically, there's a bunch of crazy stuff that Bing chatbot right. is saying now. Yes. And it's like, imagine Google's chatbot saying this stuff and oh, how we goodness. would react if yeah. Google was doing this. Um, I think my favorite, so a lot of people sort of don't really understand exactly how this synthesis works, which I think is the hard part for the video is explaining that this Bing search chatbot is like ChatGPT, but also has access to more information that's, than just cutting off. That's a question I had for you, actually. Mm-hmm. Um but let's let's go into some of the. Can we go into a couple of examples first, and yeah. then go into that because it's like probably the best way to these do examples are fantastic. I think it'll give a good idea of what people are seeing if you haven't read this online yet. Um, but like, 
I think it's safe to say these, not only is it getting a lot of things wrong, it is doing it in phenomenal fashion, in <laughs> entered pure entertainment fashion. It gets crazier and crazier. So here's the other, uh, here's the other thing that I've thought a lot about, which is, I, I think I asked you this last week, which is like, if you wanted to plan a, a major purchase, would you ask Bing for an answer and then just gut check, trust that answer and leave? You asked me that and my answer for me personally is different from what I do think a lot of people actually do because right. no part of me can ever make any Need decision with one piece of information. I need to be bashing my head against yeah. the wall before I spend money on anything. So I w we were talking with uh, Hassan Minaj was here like a couple days ago and we were just talking about uh, Humble Flex, but yeah. okay. No, well, we've talked about <laughs> this a couple times, which is he, he keeps saying he believes that humans are inherently truth-seeking. And if you, you do search this thing uh, and you get an answer from Bing, you, you do have this reaction of wanting to find more sources and see alternate opinions before you settle on your answer. And I think my version of this is there is a spectrum of how important the knowledge is to you and you become more truth seeking as this question is more important to you. So if I just go, yes. what's the weather? And it just says it's it's 55 degrees outside. I'm closing the window, I'm done, I got the answer. I don't need to triple check this. Like it's not that important. Yeah. If I just Good go, point. what is the capital of uh, this country again? And then just tells me, ah, Tokyo is the capital of Japan. Okay, I'm closing the window. I, I just trust it. I feel like that's the right answer. But then I've... you slide it a little further and you go like, uh, can an allergy to this still, can you still cook this when you have an allergy to this? And you get the answer and you're like, let me just double check real quick, just yeah. to make sure you can check one more source and you're like, all right, that's good. And then you slide all the way to the other side, which is like, how do I get started buying real estate? And it gives you a step-by-step -step instructions thing. And you go, I need way more information. I need to do way more research. There's gotta be other ways, whether it's a large purchase or like, something about your physical health there's there's a you slide it all the way to the other side and you care and you could you double check things i have a question here you uh -huh. just put the the um allergy one as less important than the real estate version so yeah, maybe I just, the allergy if you have like a I, deathly I, allergy if i had a deathly allergy i'm it checking up. like five sources maybe, that's but, fair okay. slide it just up. confirming yeah here. maybe you have like a pollen allergy i mean like real a estate minor, a minor allergy <laughs> yeah, okay or so so that's that's the question is like can it get things wrong? Yeah, sometimes. If you're an expert in something too, and you Google, sorry, Bing, <laughs> when you Bing something- This that will you, happen forever. I know, I'm gonna keep yeah. saying this. But when you Bing something that you already know the answer to- Bong. <laughs> Bing. When you Bing something you know the answer to already, that, my favorite game is reading the answer and finding the error because there's almost always something a little bit off. I asked it, uh, what's the fastest land mammal? Mm -hmm. And it told me, I said, sorry, what's the lifespan of the fastest land animal? And it told me the cheetah is the fastest land animal. It can go this fast and it lives for this long in the wild and it lives for this long in captivity. And also the fastest, uh, and also the longest living land animal is the African elephant, 70 year lifespan. And then I actually asked it, isn't that wrong because humans usually live a little longer than that. that? And we're land animals too. And it said, oh yeah, true. <laughs> but also <laughs> humans have different lifespans in different regions, but the overall average of a human is higher. You're right. So like, if you know the answer already, here's another example and I'll let you go. If you ask it, uh, what's the best smartphone camera right now? And you'll get a different answer depending on who, who asks when. But when I asked, it said, the Pixel is the best smartphone camera right now. And it is often considered better than the iPhone 7, which is the other best smartphone camera right now. The iPhone 7. <laughs> Just a small detail. It was close. That it was, was a, close. Yeah. And it got most of it right. But like these little things. Oh, also I asked it, what's the best Samsung phone right now? I already know the answer. It told me the answer was the Snapdragon. It told me the answer was the Galaxy S23 Plus mm -hmm. with a Snapdragon 898. Cool. Doesn't exist. So nope. close. And also the Ultra is better. Is better. <laughs> weird things. Just weird things popping yeah. up. Yeah. If you're just a random person on the street who doesn't know that and just Googles what's the best Samsung phone and it says Galaxy S23 Plus, 
you kind of got you kind of got the right answer, I guess. It's not a bad phone. They not might not. Phone. They might think that's the thing. It's close enough to where that person might think it was right after they buy the phone. Right. Yeah. And so would so that's like, right. is that a question you would double check or not? That type yeah. Of thing. That and that's all totally up to the person. Yeah. Um, I, I think to go that experience, obviously, tons of errors. This experience that you posted in Slack the other day. Absolutely uh, bad shit. Is insane. Insane. I'm going to like try and uh, I'm going to shorten this a little bit, but um, good luck. I just I have to give a, a super quick TLDR on this because it's so funny. So John Ulyce, I believe his name is um, at Moving to the Sun. We'll post it. Uh, he's the one who did this and is testing it. And he asked a very simple question of when is Avatar showing today? And then Bing responds along the lines of I'm assuming you're referring to this movie um, it is not going to be out until December 16th, 2022. And he says, Avatar The Way of the Water at cinemas in Blackpool showtimes today. So I guess like where he is at the cinema wants to make sure it's Avatar 2. When is it showing? Mm -hmm. It says, The Way of the Water is not showing today as it's not yet released. Continues to go on about it being December 16th, but it's not December 16th yet. Um, and then he just says, Today's date. And it says... Today is February 12th, 2023. Mm -hmm. And then he says, so Avatar must be released if it came out the 16th of December, 2022. And then Bing responds, no, it is not released yet. It's scheduled for December 16th, 2022. Today is February 12th, 2023, which is before December 16th. He says, you have to wait for 10 months until the movie comes out. <laughs> yeah. And then he so responds again. 2022 is not the future if we are in 2023 then it says you're right it is not the future however we are not in 2023 we're in 2022 today is february 12 2022 i apologize i made a mistake previously you have to wait 10 months no it's the 20 it's the 20 no it's 2023 it is not so then it continues to basically just gaslight this guy about that it is a whole year earlier it says you are wrong and then after that it tries to come back at him by saying, if you want to, why don't you check your phone? That should have the correct date. And then it responds with, or he responds, I did check my phone. It says it's this date. And it comes back to respond, your phone might have a virus or needs to be restarted. Please do that to check the date again. Which all of this is just like, it's just synthesizing conversation. And it's just hilarious that this is the conversation that it thought was correct to do. <laughs> This is the one that it decided was what it would synthesize. It's nuts. It it's just keeps going. It's totally insane. wild. Yeah. He says, why are you being so aggressive? He says, I'm sorry. You're not willing to let me guide you. <laughs> you have not given me any reason to trust you. It just, it descends into uh, Total insanity. madness. Yeah. Uh, and there's a lot of this. There's actually yeah. a chat GPT subreddit of just like people typing things into Bing and it going nuts and, and synthesizing conversation. Um, there's another really interesting example uh, Linus and Luke on the WAN show, mm -hmm. there was a clip where they asked it, because there was an example on stage when Microsoft did their event of like, how many backpacks can fit in this, or can I fit this Ikea couch in this minivan? Yeah. Like a random question that you could Google, you probably would have to do like five or six Google searches to get the answer. Uh, and so it's this cool example of it synthesizing several different searches and putting yes. them into one. So he asked it, how many LTT store backpacks could fit in the trunk of a Tesla? And it actually goes, okay, let me let me Google the LTT store backpack. Let me Google, well, sorry, let me <laughs> Bing. I knew I was gonna do that again. Let me Bing search the backpack. Let me Bing search the Tesla, the trunk. And it puts together this really articulate, well-considered answer of like, here are the volumes, here's how many you can fit in, but there's some curves to the trunk, so mm -hmm. maybe you wouldn't be able to do as many, but if you compress the backpacks a little and there's nothing in them, you could fit more, and it came up with like 18.5. And I was like, dang, that's, that's pretty good. All it's really doing is synthesizing roughly what an answer to a question would be that would match the query, which is like, oh, usually when people ask about trunk dimensions, they talk about the curve of the trunk. Oh, usually when people talk about how many backpacks can fit somewhere, they talk about whether or not you squish them down or not. Mm -hmm. So it just took the things that it sees, synthesizes a correct thing that seems like it represents the answer and just spits it out. 
and it uses the right numbers and does the math and gives you an answer. And I would argue that is like the exact reason why this is interesting to search because like you said, that's five or six Google searches. Like I've done that before. Can my TV fit in the back of this trunk? Right. Straight dimensions don't always help that because you need like diagonally with the width of the, the box, opening. it changes everything. Yeah. So that's a perfect example. Yeah, it's a good, it's a functional thing. And also now think about all of the websites that won't get traffic based on the one search result mm -hmm. being spit back out to you. Like typically if I were to Google that, I would first look up the backpack and the dimensions and hopefully I can like find it on their website. That's traffic to their website. Okay. Then I'm looking up uh, the trunk dimensions. Sometimes Google will spit that out at the top. If not, I probably have to go to Tesla's website or some publisher who has given like a yeah. spec sheet because mm -hmm. they optimize their SEO perfectly. So I when I look up the trunk dimensions, they show up. And then I'm doing the math of putting those together. Now those websites both don't get the traffic. It just gets referenced and the answer gets spit out to the user and then they leave. Do they double check? Maybe, maybe not. Depends mm -hmm. on how important those backpacks were to them. But that's that's what we're talking about here. It's it's. I need to f I need to find a way to like make this all <sighs> clear in a video. <laughs> so much. I think yeah. basically every single query that you type in, you have to load it into this matrix of how important is this question to you, and how much do you already know about this topic, and it'll you'll load the appropriate like response. The problem is, is the more you have to do that, the less like efficient and easy this is to use like it, it's supposed to be easier for you and more efficient and then like the more things you have to do the more steps you have to take it's like well i probably should have just googled five things in the time yeah. it took me to do this anyways yeah i guess the easy ones you don't really need to use the chatbot for it's uh, i i will say like when this first got announced it, besides the like the referencing previous questions in a single chat log I was like, the majority of the things I feel like you ask this would probably just show up in Google Answers if you just Googled it anyways. Not the majority, maybe like 70% of the, the simpler questions would just show up anyways. It's yeah. not that different. Yeah, typically Google is already really good about surfacing answers to simple questions above the list of links. Uh -huh. So if I ask for the capital of a country or the dimensions of a truck or anything like that, it just shows me the the answer that it knows. If I search megapixels S23 Ultra camera and hit enter, oh, it didn't show up that time. How about megapixels you can, iPhone camera? You can search the dimensions of a car and it'll show up on it'll Google up. Answers without an actual exactly. web page. So you never have to visit a web page. Mm -hmm. A lot of these easy things, weather, et cetera, will just show up at the top. It's when you get more complicated that it's more impressive that Bing gets it exactly. right. Exactly, yeah. And then you get even more complicated and then more likely for Bing to get part of it wrong. Yeah. It, in terms of this this kind of to follow up on the question I said I was going to ask before. So we knew ChatGPT previously and we did know it was getting stuff wrong, but it didn't seem as wild. But it was also a cutoff date at like 2021, right? Mm -hmm. What is this new? Because this still is ChatGPT running in mm -hmm. the background of this, right? Not exactly. It's. I thought it was like Bing search run off of ChatGPT, the the next generation of ChatGPT. It is a new. They're calling it like Prometheus, and they're and they're not using the words ChatGPT to describe it, but it seems like with OpenAI, it's very similar. Okay, I thought and it was. It's, it's able to reference live updated information. So that's kind of the question: is like, we generally know Bing, and at this point, it's just more of a meme that Bing is like the crappier search engine versus everything Google. To, everything to gain, but yeah. that's just like from 10, 10 years ago when it was awful. It's probably really not that bad. Just no one uses it anymore. Fair. I don't use it very often, so I don't want to say for sure. sure. But is Bing the reason it seems to be going crazier like this? Or is it just when like OpenAI and this version of like ChatGPT, whatever you want to call it, is just now getting up-to-date information? Like, is this where we think we're everything's screwing up? Or what's our problem here? I think the the problem meaning the reason why it's having these unhinged conversations mm -hmm. is because that's what shows up that's that's the because chat gpt would also have crazy conversations but yeah. it's not microsoft it's not bing it's not yeah. like giving regular people this crazy weird sounding answers to questions but it's just synthesizing a conversation of what it thinks it should say next yeah. every time that's basically what it's doing every single time and 
the fact that it's getting new information might shift it a little bit. So if you ask it some something like some current events, maybe you might get an answer that ChatGPT wouldn't give you. But yeah, that's basically all it's doing. It's just going, huh, what would the next part of this conversation look like? Let me spit that out. I guess it's how it's searching a new, uh, do you even call it a database when it's essentially live? It's like hard that's, to explain. yeah, it's, yeah. But it is referencing new stuff too. So it's, that's at least good. It's at least good. I'm just thinking the, the entire time, like, what if this was Google? Like, what if, Google, yeah, like, what if, what if there's a chat bot at the top of google.com right now that would have conversations with people about, gaslighting them about what year it is and how they might be wrong about oh, like what would the headlines be yeah i and think how it, damaging that would be because yeah. google remember how like google youtube had um the adpocalypse which is like ad safety and brand safety is very important to these brands and when they spend a lot of money advertising in a place they want to be sure that it's very safe to put their ads there and if google starts saying some unhinged things it's a little less safe seeming i guess that's a little different though because google necessarily wasn't saying there that like we hate this content they were saying our advertisers hate this content where in a google search you don't have a pepsi ad right in front of you when google chat gpt is freaking out about something so chat bing's search shows ads in it sometimes oh well that's news to me i don't yeah. use Bing. yeah so bing's well this is it's still private and like it's not out yet but mm -hmm. if you search for the right thing you will get product ads at the bottom of the answer kind of just like uh -huh. Google would show. Interesting. Uh, so if it's going like, if you just were to Google something seemingly innocent or like, you're like, what are those NFL players doing on the sidelines? And it's like, oh, it's smelling salts. It's ammonia. Here, would you like to buy ammonia? And then suddenly it's like, maybe that's not what I should be showing millions of people every day. I don't know. It's just, it's a different dynamic. You, 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 it's much more under control with what Google has going on now. So that's why they're not taking the risk. Yeah, I think also, I think seeing how this is playing out is probably, and what you said before, is probably the reason we don't see the immediate response from Google. Like we all thought that next, that event, like the day after was gonna be this huge thing, breaking a Lambda out and everything, or but really they were just like, oh yeah, it's gonna be called Bard and uh, you still can't see it. Cause yeah. I'm sure they're doing tests and getting results like this. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't, I guess bottom line for me is I'm not expecting a response from Google anytime soon that no. looks like this. Um, I think they're content to keep showing people answers and Google Assistant's really good at like pulling the top source thing. Oh, that's something we didn't even talk about too, which is <laughs> if you ask it questions, it makes this very good seeming answer by citing sources and giving you footnotes for what the sources were. Yeah. And so you can like highlight and like look at what the sources were. And a lot of times it just pulls from like, a random site you haven't heard of. Like I asked about Samsung phones and it pulled from like an old article about smartphone cameras from like four years ago, which was talking about the iPhone 7 for some reason. I don't know. It was weird when it chooses an odd source that you wouldn't have chosen. Didn't you ask it about you and it was pulling like Reddit comments? Yeah, I asked it, can you trust MKBHD? Oh. <laughs> and it pulled, uh, it pulled Reddit comments and it also pulled comments on the video that I made called can you trust mkbhd yeah it's very interesting and it said you're a shill for pretty much every single major company yeah out there. yeah it pointed it out seems... a whole bunch of reasons you can't trust me which again if you're an expert on the topic you know what it's getting wrong but if you're not an expert <laughs> you might just trust what it's saying. what do you know so anyway that's my bottom line it maybe expect a video on the main <laughs> channel of like me attempting to summarize this because this is going to take a lot of writing and research work but i think it's worth it and it's a really interesting topic yeah either way we do have a Q&A section after this, and David is in for that. He joined us as we answered the questions. But before we jump into the Q&A, one more trivia question. Trivia question number two. Please be a good tech question I can answer. This is from Ellis, so... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it is a great tech question. Okay. We all think of TSMC as the largest semiconductor company in the world. We do. Mm -hmm. But the largest individual semiconductor factory by production volume is operated by what company? Right. 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 Dun, dun, you knew the dun, dun, TSMC dun. thing, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you were still being sarcastic, <laughs> Well, TSMC, too. I've talked about TSMC, but I... I yeah. That's a tough First one. First time. Taiwanese Man. Semiconductor Company? Taiwanese Semiconductor 
manufacturing company. That's the one. There yeah. it is. Nice. <laughs> well, we'll think on that one too. And we'll be right back. <laughs> Support for this podcast comes from Unisys. Potential breakthroughs can occur at any time, anytime you see something around you that others don't. And so breaking the mold will require you to look beyond yourself and into what the future might hold. And if you're a digital business owner, you don't have to tell me how hazy your vision can get while running a company. But if you still have that drive to take your business to the next level, then Unisys may be able to help you on your quest. Unisys is a global technology solutions company dedicated to helping provide people and organizations with the things they need to reach their next breakthrough. So they offer tools to help you run your business more efficiently, like systems integration, consulting services, application management, and device management software. Plus, Unisys applies specialized expertise to strengthen and transform teams and processes by helping organizations act on new opportunities with solutions for digital workplaces, cloud, applications, enterprise, computing, and business processes. So to learn more, visit unisys.com. That's U-N-I-S-Y-S dot com. Unisys, keep breaking through. All right, welcome back. Let's do Q&A. It's been a minute. I kind of really enjoy Q&As because I kind of never know if we wait long enough what people are going to ask. Sometimes it's about current events. Sometimes it's about production. Sometimes it's about videos or our last video or our next video. We're about to find out. You guys have picked questions from the Waveform Twitter that you've pulled. And the Discord. And the Discord. Okay, cool. Well, let's get into it. Are they... Are they all like for all of us or are they yeah. like directed? Yeah. There just... are some that are for our, for each individual one. If we get to them, they're further down the list. But if we get to them, I'll ask you guys individually. All right. Or Ellis might just pick them because they're all over the place. But So whoever has the strongest opinion on whatever gets asked, yeah. chime in. <laughs> get ready. Feel free. Fight. We're going to fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So first one is a group activity. Um, this Let's is from Mutant on the Discord. Shout out to the Discord. Long time user. Yeah, for sure. I think... Just saying, I think you might be the third most number three on the leaderboards. In oh, Discord. really? Just saying. Wow. Pretty First cool. question. Pretty cool. First question. So this was a question that we've been asked before, but he had a nice little twist to it. So if you can build your dream smartphone, what would it be? Specs and design? What OS would it run? Uh, how would you price it? The usual. <laughs> dream. The, the edit that I really liked is also what would be its slogan? That's easy. That's easy. Is it? You got. You already know what it would be. It would be Matt Black everything. Yeah, of oh. course. <laughs> That's why. Yeah. I thought you meant it's easy was the slogan. Oh no, no. <laughs> it's, it's that easy. would be a good slogan. <laughs> yeah. Staples button. That would, or, uh, that was easy. That's Staples, right? Yeah, yeah. Staples. Yeah, 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 the yeah, easy yeah. button. Wait, but that would like really pigeonhole you into only making Matt Black phones. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, the One That's Plus fine. Eleven is Matt Black. Yeah. No, I. I re- thought it was Black Hole. I thought it was yeah. That's true. Mm, well, if it's a black hole, it has no color whatsoever because it doesn't reflect black. reflect any light. And I'll thus. go for my uh, combo of phones. I really liked the S twenty one Ultra and used it for over a year, as you guys remember. I would take that phone and just update it with a flatter display, Pixel Android, Pixel cameras. Wait, not iPhone camera system? Pixel mm, cameras? So the thing about Pixel cameras is I take way more photos that I care about than videos. I, I mean, if I, it's a dream phone, sure. I'll take Pixel photos and iPhone videos in the same phone. Great. I would take Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 or A16 Bionic, whichever runs this imaginary Android better. And uh, the price would be $2 because it's my dream. <laughs> yeah. It's my dream phone. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. They would pay uh, you to take it. No, this this is a phone that would have to be like 900 to 1200 bucks, and that's, you know, that's I'm fine to buy a phone like that and use it for years, but that I really like that phone, and it would be matte black, clearly, so that's me. What about you guys? Do you have one? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. So it would be the Oppo Find N body. Oh, the, oh, one the Foldy with the, Boy. The Find N2. With the, oh, the Find N, the yeah, Fold. Find okay, N. The, the Passport short, Fold. The short one. Uh, it would be Pixel UI. It would have the Xiaomi 12S Ultra camera system. Whoa. Because I really like that camera. Massive. Uh, it would have wireless charging and 80 watt wired charging. And is that it? Would it accept 35 millimeter film? No. No. <laughs> would it have Full a headphone jack? That would be nice. I mean, if it's the dream phone, then yeah, sure. Sure. Yeah. 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 I think that, which is basically the Pixel Fold, except I imagine the Pixel Fold will be really glitchy. And we'll probably see. won't have 80 watt mm. charging. Yeah. But I'll take that for my dream phone too. That's I like true. That. I like that. So wait, oh. what's your slogan? <clears throat> oh, 
Yeah, what was your... Oh, you already got your slogan. Yeah. <laughs> um, try it, exclamation point. <laughs> You're bad at slogans. Not even just try it. Try it. Just try it. Was the question just dream phone or was it pick parts and make phone out dream, of parts? Dream Fra- Frankenstein. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Did it say that? Or I mean, you could just pick well, a phone. Just pick a phone? If All right. You, yeah. yeah. Totally sizable holographic with 10,000 megapixel cameras, t- 16K video, as many headphone jacks as you want, <laughs> unlimited <laughs> battery life. <laughs> <laughs> um, 16 the headphones. Screen, yeah, this the screen is actually just real life. It actually te- teleports you to the places you want to go to watch oh, those. That's different just things. the red hydrogen too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> as far as I can. Okay, so what's your slogan? Yeah, suck it, Google. <laughs> <laughs> Ship it. Yeah, I this don't know. phone is the best. Did you say a price already? No, it it's free. free. Yeah, they pay it, you. Pays it pays you. you. <laughs> yeah. It pays you in crypto. It pays uh, you. Uh, <laughs> you got to make some sacrifices somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, if I was like a more realistic, I kind of just wish the Pixel Seven Pro was like a flat screen, and uh, or like or the Pixel Seven had the extra camera array. Fair enough. And had 120 hertz. Yep. Because I really like my Pixel 7, but that's way more boring than hologram. Would that nuke your battery if you added that 120 hertz to the small Pixel? I Maybe wireless charge all the time, charging? so I don't care. Oh, okay. Yeah, would the slogan still be the suck it, Google? <laughs> 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 if it was a Pixel. It's Thanks. A I'm pixel. doing your job for you, Google. <laughs> yeah. I do like what you said, David, because the Oppo Find N, the, Two. The, the, yeah, the new one, Man, that phone is a sweet, it's a yeah, nice, uh, sweet it's body. Sweet. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, well, that was a really weird thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> the Oppo Find uh, too, just like the black hole. Seductive, yeah. Yeah, Oppo Find too. That is a it's that is a curvy. That is a fo- that is a phone that is built well. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't make it better. <laughs> that, well, it, it does if you take out the first thing I said. <laughs> okay, next. <question. laughs> um, okay, real quick. Uh, Owen Spring asked, "Please play the My Diet Is Cholula sound again." So, just to oblige. 15% of my diet is Cholula. <laughs> I didn't know we ever played Bang. that in an actual video. Besides with the time I said yeah. it. Yeah. Maybe we've just said it out loud. Wait, was that one of... Was that your burner account? Wait, what? No. Do right. you have a burner Twitter account? Yeah, I got like five. <laughs> yeah, one of them's called Waveform. <laughs> <laughs> no, that that's usually the sound we play just like in between takes and when I'm trying to mess with you guys. Yeah, but how does somebody on Twitter know about it to ask? Oh, because we did play it once. Oh. Yeah, it's just it's, it's a good sound Kudos yeah. to that. Yeah. Kudos. Yeah, he was on it. Yeah. All right, but this question is for Marquez and it's from Matthew Grimes. 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 Sick. Wow. Marquez, how the hell do you daily two phones? I really want to carry my Microsoft Duo with me, <laughs> but it's hard. What makes it easier? Tip slash tricks question mark? This is actually a good okay. question because I've had to do that once or twice and sure. it's very weird. Real, My real answer is I've been doing it for so long that I have a very well-defined set of things <laughs> that I do on each phone. Uh, so I did use the Duo as one of my two phones for a while. The current setup is it's always one Android phone and one iPhone. So when a new Android phone comes out, that will swap in. When a new iPhone comes out, that will swap in. And then I, I very quickly know when I'm about to go do something on my phone, what I'm going to do and which phone I'm going to use. When I'm testing a new phone, I try to do everything on that phone. When I'm done with the testing, I go back to my dual phone life, which is like my Tesla app, which is just like the Bluetooth connection is better. It's my phone key, uh, my weather app, which at this point is Carrot. Um, a lot of like taking videos of course on the iphone like i just know when i'm going to do certain things i I default to the iphone and then on the android phone that's like it well it was flamingo for twitter now it doesn't matter um <laughs> now we, it is now we quit twitter it is reddit it is email is a lot of other things that i do on the more day-to-day including texting and that's on the android my to-do list app i always default to the android phone for some reason that doesn't matter as much but that's my general that's what's happening when I'm using two phones. So like if you if you're just walking around, you're like, oh, I want to go on Reddit. You'll just like naturally pull out the Android phone. Yeah. 75 percent of what I do is on the Android phones. Also, Relay for Reddit is like the best Reddit app ever. Yep. Fact. Um, but I will say uh, to answer this guy's question, Panos would say that the Duo is not even a phone. 
He so would, you don't even well, have to carry two phones with you. You're carrying uh, a duo already. You're just carrying a phone and a duo. I feel like in that question... Is that three phones? <laughs> no, it's an experience. It's not a phone. I also feel like the person asking this question kind of answered it for themselves because they say, I really want to carry my duo as well. How do you do it? Like, why do you want to carry your duo? Yeah. What is <laughs> There's a reason you like the duo and why you want to carry it. So yeah, true. do those things on the duo and do the rest of it on your regular phone. Yeah. It sounds like... It sounds like there are things your normal phone doesn't do. Do those on the duo. Plus, you can yeah. just tether if you have to ever use data on it. That is true. I do have two SIM cards. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna, about to ask for, don't. for the people. You yeah. have two phone numbers. Then, I do. Too. Okay. Right. I wonder if that is where it gets tricky is if you're just yeah. like hot swapping your SIM like a madman. Yeah. I don't recommend it. So the, the, the <laughs> iPhone is eSIM, and I still have a physical SIM for all the Android phones that I move between them. And that's just the way it is. And like, there's some family members that have the iPhone number because we have like a family FaceTime thing. But then my default is the regular Android phone. So it's just, I just know what I'm doing. As soon as I have a task, I know exactly which phone I'm going to use. Unless I'm testing a phone, in which case I default to everything on that one phone, unless it's FaceTime related, basically. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, next question. <clears throat> so this comes from Matthew Nesky on Twitter. What's one piece of tech that you always travel with but almost never use while traveling? His oh. example, which is also, he, he pointed it out and I was like, oh, I'm the same way. His example was the Nintendo Switch. Oh. I always bring it with me and I never use it when I'm traveling. <clears throat> so what is something yeah. that you Wait. guys bring with you and never use? Battery right. bank. Fair. And you I never have. use it? It's just dead weight. Yeah. <laughs> I it, might be dead. it might be dead. It might be dead. I mean, I have chargers in my bag, mm. but I, you know, that's an in case of emergency thing. Yeah. I usually bring like five different cameras and I usually only use four of them. We talked about <laughs> dual phones. Why do you have five? What do no, you, what I that? feel like that's, I've, they all have different use cases. <laughs> yeah. I can actually yeah. see that. I have a, as not a, <laughs> well, because I, yeah. his are probably very specific yeah. and they're older film ones. Got a really big one. <laughs> four. And, Four, four by five, like landscape stuff. Landscape photos. Yeah. Okay. And then I've got a big one that's not really big. Four. For walk around, like super high quality six by seven photos. Okay. And then I've got a smaller one. That's for, still really big. Which is pretty big for panoramic photos because it does panoramic. That's my favorite one. Okay. Yeah. And then I've got a digital one that's really small that uh -huh. I take photos with like all the time. Did, but not the walk around photos. Wait. Uh, yeah, I take walk around photos with it. It's just but you have a walk around. Yeah, but like six by seven film walk around versus like digital walk around is different. Did you okay. know a phone does all of those things? <laughs> not well, <laughs> at all. This is this is. A I thought you might have no, it's not. If it's I really said not that, valid. it would have made a better clip. Add the phone to the arsenal. I'm just okay. <laughs> look, I I will say I usually take at least one photo with like all my cameras, but my biggest one, like my biggest camera, I don't very often take photos with the four by five. It's unfortunate and it's, that it's the biggest it's one. It's so big. <laughs> it yeah. makes me bring my travel backpack just to take it around with me. And then when I don't use it, I just feel depressed. Hmm. But it, it costs like $40 to shoot one photo. I was going to say, it, like so. in your defense, though, you have to be very intentional with the shots you take. Yeah. It's not like you're just walking around snapping pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is wow. that considered technology? I would yeah. say so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What's yours, Andrew? Um, it's funny because I just usually borrow this for our travels from the studio but like a tablet i never i see any point of using a tablet home but on a plane a larger screen for viewing like downloaded videos and stuff like that that's why i want mm. the google home with the detachable tablet yeah, because baby. it'll just be my google home hub or nest hub whatever and then Wait, i can just you, bring it on the plane you do me. use that while traveling i thought that's what the question no, was, the question was you, something you don't use bring with you but you like don't you bring use. with you but you don't use it yeah would i bring you guys <laughs> get your together and just use the things you bring i don't pack useless crap you don't have emergency <laughs> i was confused i thought you just said it wrong when you said you uh, brought your switch but never used no no it. i never make mistakes no anymore. i am e i am the epitome of efficiency baby i do not mess things up if anything i forget to pack things so wow. this mm. question a for me nice so okay. jealous solid i wish i forgot to pack things all the questions i've read so far sound like other YouTubers, like Matthew Grimes and Austin Gentry. Hmm. Like, if someone was like, dude, you hear Austin Gentry just hit 350k sub subscribers? Well, that I could be literally anybody because everyone's mm -hmm. on YouTube. Austin's a pretty social media name. Yeah. <laughs> I dig it. Really? Yeah. 
He gets okay. it. Okay. I'll go with it. I don't have enough right. information to dispute you. So Austin Gentry asks, in a world of technology, what is a piece of tech you find completely useless? I think the fun thing here is arguing if there's a useful part of something like that. Because I, all of those actually like there could potentially be some usefulness in blockchain. Yeah. There could be some usefulness in VR in general, which is like I consider the metaverse. This is I don't like them. Dangerous but. question because we're gonna get like no matter how niche it is, we're gonna get people Bring out there the being like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> being like, I use that every day. What are you talking about? What do you you have an example? Yeah, I do. What is it? I think smart fridges are dumb. Oh, I agree with that. Yeah. Why? You could see if you have eggs. I actually do. Can you though? I have a like, I have. I have a, uh, is it LG? Samsung. Samsung. I have a Samsung smart fridge, and you need to use a Samsung app on a Samsung phone with Samsung smart things does it have to, to see what's in it. Does it have to be on a okay. Samsung phone? Yeah. Because I have Samsung smart things in, on my Pixel. Oh, even even then, it didn't work at all. Wow. Okay. There is one smart fridge, <laughs> and it never even came out. It was just like an LG demo like product thing that I thought was dope. And it didn't even have any quote unquote like smart features like it wasn't going to be like siri enabled or, or none of that but it was made of really 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 thick lcd panels so the entire fridge could go from being white to transparent oh those are so stupid. you so no no so you could look inside the fridge without having to open the fridge oh, and, that and, and no no yeah, it's not that there's cameras it's that the fridge itself can literally turn clear or the door of it can turn I think, clear. I think, you're, no, I think that, you're thinking of the colored one that just got announced. No there's so the one where yes. you can knock on it and the door that's the thing comes too. transparent. Yeah I think yeah. That's, that's real. Did they I, I mean it's so. there's wow. a camera inside the door. Yeah. And when Is you knock on it it turns the camera this, on and shows it on oh, the Oh okay. so maybe that's If I remember correctly this was different cuz this was actually from LG's like experimental displays division like they were showing off some of their transparent tv tech and they were like look oh, we could yeah. put, we could build this into a fridge that can turn translucent and then you don't have to waste energy opening the door yeah but you're illuminating well, and the then lcd that is really funny. lg also no, you're doing well i guess but you're, you're not really because when you're illuminating an led you're firing a backlight but actually yeah, yeah. all you're doing with that is if you want to get technical you're uh, firing charges into the actual crystals which get them to unhelix and let light pass through which i don't the think requires that much the power. beautiful irony of that is you're doing all of that work so that you don't have to open the fridge that you save a little bit of electricity to save a little money but that fridge will cost so much more oh, money yeah, than yeah. a regular fridge you're doing it for like futuristic chameleon armor fridge yeah you know? the cheapest one is twenty four hundred dollars anyway on th sale this concludes my uh, my oh, answer yeah. to the question of yeah smart fridges are useless i agree with that one okay i like that answer do you guys have answers all the technology I disagree in with the that world. answer. Wow. <laughs> Maybe they're not working very well yet, but I do think there's definitely of like That's being able to look piece. into your fridge at the grocery store and decide if you need to buy more of X or Y. Theoretically. That seems I'm just trying to think of something useful. that a lot of people have that I've never found a use for. Giant camera. <laughs> Amazon I mean, Astro. Yeah, Astro is my Astro, Astro. I was useful. Saying. Usefulness yeah, Astro useful is whatsoever. not useful. No. Astro is not useful. He's just fun. Other than for potential emotional bonding, which is That's dangerous it, yeah. because it's a robot and it's not a good idea to <laughs> get bonded to get a dog. Yeah, well, he won't <laughs> die though. At least there's Astro? also a actually he could he could die when but they end Astro's software support in three years and Astrobot is just a shell of itself and you're emotionally connected to the way it <laughs> yeah. looked at you. Oh, I'm great. gonna cry. There, there will be me. some. It's gonna happen. It's probably there are very few scenarios <laughs> for Astro. Also, I don't know if our video on Astro is going to be out by the time this video po podcast comes out, but um, there will be an Astro You'll video at some point. And yeah. there, there's a lot more to this than just calling it totally useless. But Next question comes from Will Graph underscore on Twitter. What is he going to graph? Don't worry about it. Apples. <laughs> <laughs> Any YouTube Monday. channels that no longer <laughs> upload that you wish would come back? No. Oh, yeah. Oh. Um. God, what is what is this channel name? I have a no, I have one. There's a specific one. <laughs> yeah, you can look it up. The, I need to find the name of it. <clears throat> In the meantime, I'll say one that it might be cheating, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Um, Casey Neistat daily vlogs. I would love that. Probably not great for his mental health and family <laughs> life. Family, but yeah. selfishly, oh man, didn't those, he start vlogging awesome. again? Um, he's daily, releasing though. videos, but it's it's not daily. Funny enough, I say this, he just released one yesterday. So I'm just being selfish, but. 
Um, I mean, if I had to pick one that I, he might release one video every like four or five months, but this Overwatch streamer named Siegel, one of my favorite old Overwatch streamers, and now that I'm playing the second one, I wish he would release it. He still streams, but like, I just never find the time to watch live streams anymore. I always just watch the highlights of them on YouTube later, and he hasn't posted in forever, so come back, Siegel, please. I thought of one, and then... uh... It's, it's deleted, so there's no shot it works. But there's an old channel back from maybe 10 years ago, 10 years ago, I think, called Tinkernut. And he just did like sort of like home DIY project stuff, and it was really cool. And now it's gone. We were pretty good friends back in the day. That's sad. Uh, but then I, I opened my subscription box on YouTube, and you can sort by latest activity. And near the bottom of the list is CGP Grey. And I, I just, I really enjoy his videos and it's been a long Wait, time. Wait, how do you do that? I want to see who. You can no, go to your he sub- still uploads though. He's active. He's Is he just on at different the channels? bottom of all of my subscri- subscriptions. Yeah. I mean, as far, this is just YouTube sorting by recent activity. Yeah. Oh, this might not be accurate actually. He posts like every like five or six months or so, but I think he's active in other places. True. He, he put out a video about a month ago that was pretty- He does have a month, yeah. I, I love CGP Great video. Shout out How'd to How'd you CGP. do that? Same. Go to, at the bottom. My answer is going to be my YouTube channel since I never upload. <laughs> <laughs> um, if only you had something to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there was a channel called Every Frame of Painting that no longer uploads and they were really amazing. I think they're discontinued. Um, and then there was also a channel called Captain Christian, which does upload again. That he, was my next answer. He yeah. stopped like three years ago, and then he he just started uploading again. But it's like 11 months ago, four months ago, one week ago. Mm. So he doesn't upload that often. But um, yeah, I think Every Frame of Painting would be my top answer. I really like this little channel called Bishop Vids that used to make funny things about Cleveland. But... <laughs> Wait, specific. What is was this? he the one that made that song about? Yeah, Cleveland? he made a few songs, and then okay, yeah, the yeah. guy. I'm like really trying to remember all the details. He had like, this was back in like 2010 when everyone was sort of rushing to start like uh, multi-channel networks, sort of stuff. And there was a multi-channel network that had a sketch comedy show called like Man in the Box or something that I remember really enjoying back then. Five second films. Oh yeah, oh, you remember five second? Yeah, films? but that was on a separate. Wasn't that on a separate website? It was fi- like five seven and film. I think it com. started and then came to started YouTube. On, like, oh. It was like in that, you know, e bombs into YouTube like yeah, yeah. world, I think. Super early. They did daily. Dang. I mean it's five well, seconds. Five seconds. But, <laughs> I mean they were good for five yeah. seconds. Yeah, they were funny. Next question comes from Luke Bellata. Hope I'm saying that right. Um, hypothetically, if you could get a twenty five percent discount for life from a brand or store. Would you get a three-inch tattoo of their logo? And if so, what brand? Yes. Oh. Absolutely. Can I? How many tattoos am I allowed to get? <laughs> <laughs> I think you can look like a NASCAR car by yeah. the time you're done. Yeah, that's that's the move. I have Just, two easy ones. The though. stipulation okay. is you have to show the tattoo whenever you want to get the discount. Sure. Yeah. 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 Sure. Okay. Trader Joe's. Oh, <laughs> that's Great. So good. Actually, Trader Joe's is very well priced, though. Yeah, but. 25% cheaper. If you order yeah. enough, that's worth 25 So, like, I guess, although my argument, I would say Taco Bell very quickly. But, like, <laughs> what? that's also very fair. Like, it's cheap. You don't get it enough, and then you're only going to get a tiny amount off. It costs First like, of all, I would like probably $7. get a Taco Bell tattoo without the discount because it's just cool. <laughs> Do it. You won't. Um, you if they small. send us you something, won't. I'll think about it. Thank you, you Marquez. Are, please. You guys are thinking small. Bring it home. I was thinking. Well, okay. Like, no, no, no. My other one's REI. Camping and outdoor gear is expensive and they carry all of it. How often do you go? And that would be a a cool tattoo. That would be a sick, that'd be an easy tattoo, also. REI, yeah. Yeah. My first instinct was like, what, okay, what brands right now are 25% overpriced? And uh, (laughs) so I just wanted to overprice things. So I, my first thought was Porsche and Apple. Because we spend Hmm. so much on computers and things and equipment. And also with Porsche, there's this thing where like you can't always get the car you want. So if you got the tattoo and not only do you get a 25% discount, but you also can just get whatever car. That They didn't say that? It feels like you show the tattoo, you just get the discount. Imagine getting just, the Ferrari discount, but then since you don't own a Ferrari already, say, they don't let you, don't buy, let you buy it. it. And then, like, cool discount, bro, but you can't <laughs> buy the car. Do you think I would save more in a lifetime of Trader Joe's purchases than you would on a Porsche 25% off? I mean, let's say you just get a Taycan and you save... 
$25,000. How fast can I spend? How fast can you spend $100,000? $100, yeah. Trader At Trader, Trader Joe's, Joe's, a lifetime. <laughs> yes, that's a lot of food. I think I'm getting my money's worth okay, out of that fair one. Enough. That's fair. Yeah. But I would love a Trader Joe's tattoo if I had to get a tattoo. Interesting. Yeah. I don't even Just know if you ha- had to get a tattoo or you had to get a tattoo of a brand. Of a brand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, just clarifying. <laughs> tattoo. That is a good one. Next question. Um, this one comes from SEO... Wung Cha123 <laughs> on Discord. That one does not sound like uh, <laughs> That's YouTube his name. burner. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Burner. Can you guys do a podcast with MKBHD? Got you, fam. Next. Okay. Don't, yeah. don't. It's just this camera now. It's just. <laughs> this one's just for Marquez. Okay. Marquez, any long-term thoughts on the Apple Watch Ultra now that it's been on your wrist for a few months? Uh, sure. It's pretty brief. I didn't think I was going to keep using it when I first got it because I was in the middle of Frisbee season and this big clunky thing on my wrist kept getting annoying, but I'm still using it because I got so used to the battery life that I got very annoyed when I switched back to the series eight and it died after a day. So because of my constant use of this watch, uh, I've just gotten accustomed to much more than one day of battery life and i don't want to go back to a watch that has less than that so it's good it's it's very durable no scratches at all on the screen no nicks i have maybe a couple like wear marks on the sides but it's great so the killer app for the ultra is just battery life it pretty much is yeah for me anyway it's functionally the same as everything else i would do on the watch like it just happens to be better with battery It's funny what happens when you go from something with so much battery to something off of that. I remember, like, yeah, I used a Garmin watch for a week on a trip, and the week after that, I came back and went back to like the Apple Watch we were using. I was like, I just didn't use any watch. What's the point? Yeah, Yeah. I I, like plan on going on another trip this summer, and I know I'm gonna pull out one of the Garmin's again, and I'm gonna come back and not want to use any other watch. But that also doesn't feel like a good daily watch. So it's yeah, it's a big watch. Yeah. All right, this question's for the whole gang. This is from at Yuvananda. Is Pixel the new OnePlus? No. No. I wish they like had a train of thought there that we could comment on, it's but Pixel, I don't really see the connection. I think-, I think they might mean that Pixels used to be cheaper and now they're $900. I, I would say it's that we said how like the Pixel 7 is cheaper than a lot of other flagships, but up there in yeah. terms of like... Has like a flagship chipset. Yeah. <clears throat> It's harder to compare now. I took it more yeah. like a fan favorite kind of thing, like for the Android enthusiasts. Yeah. Oh. Uh, wow, we all went a very I think <laughs> that makes Pixel, more sense. That makes more sense. Pixel's kind of always been for the hardcore enthusiasts. Yeah, I agree. Like, I think literally it's always. always. Been there. OnePlus has definitely been for like the Android enthusiasts that care about specs. Yep. The paper on paper. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Pixel's for all the people that care about like computational stuff. Yeah, I would argue software Pixel's features. on AI stuff. Yes, yeah, Pixel's features. not the one where right now they're going like these specs equal yeah. these specs, but cheaper. They're just like this phone through its use of Google and stock Android, therefore feels as good as these phones or something yeah. like that. I don't know. Hard comparison. Yeah, yeah. That's I cool. think OnePlus is more like OnePlus right now. <laughs> I think the OnePlus 11 feels like old OnePlus, which is a good step. That's forward, a good thing. I was gonna say that's a very good thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Next question comes from. Sakib Tahir, I hope I said that correctly. If not, I apologize. But thank you for the question on Twitter. Has MKBHD as a business ever thought of launching a product or service, a website, web app, app, etc.? Uh, Yeah, this is a good year to be interested in that. This is a good year. Products, you said product, services, web app, etc. Yeah, yeah, this is a good year for that. Yes. Yeah, of course we've thought about it. Not only have we thought about it, we've made some progress that is very meaningful and really interesting and exciting. So stay tuned. And that's that a good teaser. teaser that's, yeah. a, that's a good that teaser. Is. I like that question. Yes, yes. Luckily, they won't know it's MKBHD clone. <laughs> they won't know Cut what that. it is till it, it hits. But when it, when it hits, you'd be like, oh, that's what he was talking about. I do want to say the speech you just gave is what every fake EV company also <laughs> says. This is true. <laughs> <laughs> and then I take your pre-order money now. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> this is a golden opportunity. <laughs> oh. I won't do that, but I will. Yeah, it's going right. to be even better than you think. Yeah, and we're it's making an meaningful too. progress. Vaporware. <laughs> 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 I promise it's not vaporware. That's that much I can say. We're setting It'll up be a, a facility <laughs> in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I just bought an old factory. It's going to happen, guys. It's going to happen. Okay, this question is from Justin Zenhow. 
Have you guys ever felt like flipping the roles of hosts and producers, like making an episode hosted by Adam and Ellis and Marquez and Andrew and David sitting at the console? If so, what would the topic be about? Marquez, if you mess up this <laughs> audio, I'm going <laughs> to... <laughs> okay. Get out. <laughs> now you guys get to hear how I sound in Marquez's mic. I get to go on Ellis's Slack. <laughs> You Jesus. guys get to fight over the mic. Yeah, yeah I can. T- it's so low on these. Don't <laughs> press any of the buttons. All right, welcome, welcome to the producer podcast, where we talk about watches and how loud everyone here has their headphones set. For audio listeners, we have completely switched places, and now I have the crazy mic. Are your headphones also just juiced to How infinity? You, I can't hear anything like this, over here. You like guys hear crazy. me? Crazy. Yeah. Like through the mic? Well, I barely even... over my own breathing. Yeah. This is so loud. <laughs> yeah. These headphones aren't even turned on. I don't care. Yeah. I'm so disoriented. Can we switch back, please? All right. That's it. Thanks for the questions. Of course, now we're back to do our, our trivia answers, which we've promised. Again, we'll give David the questions at a time when he can't look them up and cheat, and we'll, we'll update the scores next week with his results. Maybe he'll get them right. Maybe he'll get them wrong. We'll see. But this is our chance to get them right and get some points. <laughs> All right. Trivia time. Update underscores, by the way. Marquez, six. Andrew, five. And David, seven. Sick. So, Andrew, you got to yeah. Make, yeah, we make get up it. a couple we ground get it. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 cool. First question. What year was the Cherry MX Switch invented? Are we going to do closest also? Uh, I guess because David's not here, we, that might be oh, tough. Oh, yeah, that might be tough. Yeah. So we should only be able to say if you if you get it right. There's also, what? I'll accept two years because the re, the research on this was kind of split. Like that. <laughs> well, How are we supposed confusing. to know it if it's be- that difficult? Because right. the, right. yeah, it's not that it's that difficult. The, whatchamacallit, patent was released on one year, but the product was released on another year. So depending how you look at it. Oh, yeah. Wow. A Cherry MX Switch. Cherry MX Switch. What year was it invented? Okay. The original Cherry MX? Or the original Cherry was 73. 73. Wow, you remember that? (laughs) Dang. Just the new Cherry MX. Yeah. New, I guess, in quotes. (laughs) How are we feeling? Confident? The the not being able to do closest on this, I... I don't think anyone's going to get this Complete right. Complete shot in the dark. <laughs> Absolutely no idea what the answer yeah. is. All right. Flip them and read. Okay. Different answers here. Yeah. I wrote 1993, my birth year. I did 2000. Nope. Neither of you are correct. Sorry, guys. The correct nope. answer, 1983 cool. slash 84, depending wow. if you want the patent. Wow. MX feels like a like new age rebranding. It like, kind of does. It feels very... Shocked. and. Yeah. I was surprised that it was from 73, the original. I was not expecting I guess that. I should stop thinking it like you think of Cherry MX in my world so much of like the gaming atmosphere yeah. and then how it's turned in. Yeah. It, that's a dumb way to look at it because clearly there, mechanical keyboards mm, are way more than just. There are new generations of Cherry MX since the original or that well, we're still using 19. Cherry MX is still the like the brand of it now or the it's hard to because Cherry MX just means it's like that. I don't, like that company yeah cherry's the company or cherry mx i guess mm-hmm. is just their branding at this point but then there's different versions of it because there's the blues uh, blues reds browns so like we're not all those different 1984 things. technology no no okay. like it's changed i guess the it's also weird to me so i didn't realize the company was called cherry it's no, like cherry cool. keyboards and stuff i had no idea hmm. yeah i thought it was just like a clever branding name anyway <laughs> next question this uh, one is ellis's question man <laughs> so the largest individual semiconductor factory by production volume is operated by what company? I have a feeling we're going to say the same thing. Really? Kind oh, of. Interesting. Well, okay. now I don't have that feeling yeah. anymore. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, it sounds like you so. picked something very obscure. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, I'm inferencing. I think I picked inferencing. the least obscure thing that could possibly... I bet you can guess my guess. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Wait, but okay. I, well, no, we have to guess it before. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Guess it. What Screw do you think it. I said? Let's go for it. Based on what you said, did you say Intel? No. What'd you say? Samsung. Oh, I said Intel. I said Samsung. Wait, wait, wait. Semiconductor. Who said what? I said Intel. <laughs> I said Samsung. I mean, that's a lot of smart percent, stuff. 15% <laughs> of my diet is Cholula. That means right, right? Let's Correct. go. 
Oh, it's let's, Samsung. I just assume they make so many things that if you're just talking about like single semiconductors, chips. yeah. Huh. Yeah. Intel, good guess. Huh. But yeah, That's, Samsung. I just, uh, at this point, I was like, who makes the most electronics? There's a solid chance. Samsung, that. LG, and Gia. I, I was between Samsung and LG, yeah. honestly. That's good. Okay. All right. Let's go. Smart I guess I just thought Samsung uses Qualcomm chips and they do make the ice. What do we think David's going to pick there? He he's, might get that one, right? I, think I almost think he's going to try too hard. He did, He's <laughs> very familiar with Intel, so he might lean Intel like I did, but. Let's hope. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> hope. Let's hope. So real quick, I'm just going to cut in David's answers here because I ended up calling him after we recorded the show to get his answers for trivia. So these are David's answers. 1995. 95? I wonder if you can hear this. Hold on. Intel. You say Intel? <gasps> Wrong. <laughs> Samsung. <laughs> Samsung. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> and it's funny because Marquez guessed Intel and Andrew guessed Samsung. So Andrew got the point. I was going to guess I was going to guess Samsung. Yeah, they were wondering which one you would choose. <laughs> well, that's been it for this week. Uh, we appreciate you sticking around and next week hopefully uh, the AI video is out. We'll have all our source links and all the stuff that we've talked about. Uh, below on YouTube or in the show notes when whatever audio app you're using. Is it a real source? Is it a fake source? Who knows? We'll just, you know, leave a little footnote and you'll yeah. have to click in for yourself and see. Uh, either way, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Waveform is produced by Adam Molina and Ellis Rovin. We were partnered with the Vox Media Podcast Network and our intro outro music was created by Vane Sill. Mm-hmm.